What's going on everybody? Well, if you saw any of my fishing videos, especially the one where I was nymphing, it's right back there behind that building on the other side of the highway where the river is. I'll probably show it to you later, but in the meantime, I'm a man of my word. So, as you can see, there it is, Big Sky. So, let's go ahead and do a video on it. I'll take you a little bit through the town, kind of tell you what I thought and what happened to this place while I lived here and even what's going on after I left, all right? So, I'll see you on the next clip. I'll be right back. Well, I'm gonna turn you around real quick. For 10 years, I got to see that mountain every time I drove up here. Every time I'd come home from Bozeman doing grocery shopping and stuff like that, that was my view. I'm going to give it to you one more time. Kind of beautiful, isn't it? It's honestly a shame what this place has become. I hear they were trying to turn it into the next Vale. So, I'm going to stop off in the West Fork. And I'll show you a little bit about it, kind of tell you what's going on and what it looked like before any of this was even done, all right? So I'll see you guys in a few seconds. All right, everybody, check this out. So this was Fire Pit Park. Believe it or not, that fire pit used to actually be two foot deep. It looks like they slacked on their maintenance because now it's barely even a foot deep. It used to have a steel ring on the inside. And each one of these posts, I'm going to swing you around this way. I want you to pay attention right behind me. You notice the N? They actually built this as a compass so that it had the key points north, south, east, west on it. And as far as the rest of the town, everything back over there is all original. Everything on this side, not so much, honestly. So basically what happened to this town is a bunch of people moved in like everywhere else right but with one exception they decided to go ahead and open up what they called the yellowstone club now that's where all the people go you know matt damon ben affleck and all those people that's where they build houses as a matter of fact i actually worked in matt damon's house and jennifer aniston lars ulrich and all the rest of the guys okay so right here where alberto's restaurant is that used to actually be the uh bluebird and then it turned into a couple of other things and now it's alberto's great mexican food i'll give them that the only other building that i really recognize that's had some serious remodels happens to be the hungry moose now the hungry moose is your local grocery store it was owned by some people and the husband passed away it's a real bummer on that one they ended up selling, it went to somebody new, and so they kind of turned it into Hollywood. But I'm gonna point out some things for you. The community center over there is brand new. This park has been around for a while, but they redid it. Way out back there, there's a whole bunch of other stuff, and I'll take you down there in a second as soon as I get back in my vehicle, because the way this place has changed, I don't really want to leave it out of my sight, honestly, regardless of the type of people that are up here. But everything on the back side of this building is brand new. You got the Wilson Hotel and all that stuff, which is supposed to be like the Hilton style hotel and everything else. So we'll go ahead and take a trip over there in a second. But in the meantime, I'm actually going to show you the condo that I used to live in and show you what my local neighborhood looked like before I was forced to move out of this place due to the inflation and the massive amount of money they were asking for these places. Honestly, I kind of think it's ridiculous. It's like I said, they want to turn it back into like a veil. And you guys have seen the lift lines at Vail. Why would you even want to deal with that? Local bus stop they had. This is something that's been around for quite a while. So anyway, I'll queue back up in a second and show you some more stuff. And then after that, we'll go up the mountain and I'll show you how much that place has changed. Well, there ain't nothing like being in the old neighborhood. 
All these houses have been here for a very long time. As a matter of fact, just that way was the condo that I actually used to own with my daughter's mom. Needless to say, she got all the money out of it. So, I'll go ahead and show you what they look like. We bought that thing for $223,000 and she sold it for three quarters of a million. And I still live in a bus. But this is the park that was right behind it. And honestly, it was great because my daughter was young enough to really take advantage of this place. And I was happy that she had a park in the backyard. We did a little bit of gardening, this and that, you know, but that's just how things go. Now I hear that the rent and the house costs are through the roof, unfortunately. If you go just past that over there, there's a couple of pubs and stuff like that. And I happen to know, know the owner of one of them. It's called uh, Milky's. That place has been around for a very long time. And honestly, I will say this. The pizzas are amazing. And last time I checked, it's just family that still runs it. They have a couple of people that work that are employees. So every once in a while, you know, if you're looking for the good old fashioned pie that you're used to, make sure one of the family members are making it because otherwise it might not be the same. And if you're a pizza lover, you know what I mean. But I'll go ahead and take you out and just kind of show you real quick. I'm going to walk you down through this park just a little bit and show you. This had a shared access. There's a lot of people just walk through here, stuff like that. It was no big deal. For a while there, there were a bunch of complaints how they wanted to go ahead and close it off and everything because the condos were like private property and all that stuff. But as you can see to the other side of me, there's the gazebo. That gazebo's been there for a very long time, honestly. As a matter of fact, the woman that we bought our condo off of, which is the one right up here, actually helped put this park in because she had a daughter and she wanted somewhere for her daughter to be able to play. We also went ahead and picked the colors for the color scheme on these because my daughter's mom at the time was one of the uh, main members for the HOA of this place. But as you can see, that was the condo. The door on that side of that garage, that happens to be the only condo that has a door and I'm the one that put that in before they did the siding. Also, those garden boxes on the side, yeah, I built those too, believe it or not. So anyway, I figured I'd just show that to you real quick. Kind of, kind of a bummer. It's even more of a bummer that I didn't get anything out of the deal, you know. I put a lot of time, a lot of effort, and some money into the place and didn't get anything out of it, but I guess that's what happens. So in the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and hit another location, and I'll queue back up in a second, so I'll see you guys in a bit. Well, I'm in that section I told you I'd take you down, and I happen to be right in front of the movie theater now. <laughs> Here's the funny thing about this movie theater. Back when it opened, it used to have a full bar in it. Like, no kidding. You can get your alcohol and go watch a movie, provided you were an adult. Back there, I don't know how well you can see the sign, but it's Grizzly Outfitters. Now, I'd hardly call it an outfitter anymore, honestly, because the last time I was in there, they got rid of everything. That used to be the place where you were able to get all of your backcountry supplies and everything. But, there it is. The movie theater. As a matter of fact, it looks like they changed it a lot. So who knows if it still has a bar in it or not. But in the meantime, I'll go ahead and take you down. By the way, that building right there, back when I lived there, did not exist either. Neither did the movie theater or any of the ones that I'm about to show you. All this used to be dirt. And honestly, they turned it into a pay to play place. This place has gotten so bad that you can't live here and work here at the same time. And if you do, you're barely surviving. That's how ridiculous it's gotten, unfortunately. 
honestly it's just like any other place where they decide to go ahead and build everything and then kick the lifeblood out of the town because they didn't want the lifeblood there but they still want you to come up here and work unfortunately which is kind of a big bummer so i remember when this was all dirt lot you used to be able to just ride your bikes through here walk your dogs do cross-country skiing and a whole bunch of other stuff like that but as you can see it's far from that now unfortunately there's only one store over here that I know of that might still be here and then one restaurant now the restaurant I actually worked for the woman that owns the restaurant she partnered in divorced her husband I guess her husband after the divorce just walked away didn't want anything to do with it didn't want the headache so he just walked away let her have it it's a very very popular restaurant up here and it used to be on the other side they make Thai food really good Thai food I'll give the woman credit she actually goes to Thailand and learns the cooking methods over there then comes back here and applies them as you can see there's the outdoor shop they do fishing and all that stuff that's one of the locally owned ones from the guy that's been here for a very long time and why not I'll show you the Thai place right there okay it's up to you to read the sign I just don't feel like saying it on camera but honestly this is kind of what it's turned into this building here black diamond I'm guessing that's probably black diamond ski rentals they used to be a little bit farther down now not so much we're coming up on the Wilson up here and there's another park I'm gonna go ahead and just swing you because I don't really want to walk that far. You can see there's the Wilson Hotel right there. The park next to it. Way off in the background is Roxy's Market. That was a person that came in from Colorado and decided to go ahead and do a market. And then everything past that is all new builds. So, just to give you an idea, everything up there is apartments. All of them, condos, all that stuff. Granted, you're probably gonna be spending $5,000 a month for rent. If you're lucky, you'll get away with $3,000 a month. But either way, it's still not pretty compared to what I remember this place being. But what do you expect? It is a ski resort. I was talking to some locals earlier and it's like I told them, they could have achieved the same thing just taking a different idea, but instead, they wanted to turn it into a massive playground for all the billionaires and millionaires and stuff like that and kick all the locals out just like every other pace so honestly for me to come back and see all this new development it's actually kind of devastating which kind of sucks I'm not gonna lie granted for the people that can live up here I'm happy for them it looks like they are enjoying their lives and stuff like that some kid tried to sneak up on my camera back there but I don't feel like filming nobody else. I'm just gonna give you my opinion on this. So I'm gonna take off, I'm gonna go up the mountain. I'll see you guys in a second. Mountain to the ski resort itself. And I stopped off right here because I wanted to show you something. And this goes back to the my thoughts on this day video where I stopped a woman from sliding down marks, okay? Now this is andesite, okay? Nothing really that spectacular to look at as far as steep angles over there is Lone Peak okay now I'm gonna explain a couple things to you if you look right in the middle where all the rocks are you've got one ski run on the white and one ski run on the left okay now the one on the right happens to be Little Kular Ballroom into the secret the one on the left happens to be the big Kular. Now, if you go all the way up and you look next to that, you'll see a couple of slots there that happen to be the gullies. Those gullies are in my video hospital to 11,166 feet, okay? Now, these videos that I have are from 2019. I haven't been up here, which is kind of a bummer, and I'll talk a little bit more about that and the reasons why and why it's such a bummer, but I want you to pay attention to one thing. 
I want you to look at the angle on that south face above those pockets. You see that first really, really big snow field? That is Mark's, okay? That's the run that I stopped the girl from sliding all the way down. And I stopped her at the gully's traverse, which if you know what you're looking at when you're looking at mountains, you're gonna see the big coulard comes down like that, a bunch of rocks, there's a little itty bitty chute in the middle of those rocks, that's called dobies. And then when you go over, you have gully one, two, three, four, five, and six. And after that, it's called TU. There's another name for it, but they had to change it because it was inappropriate, but they abbreviated it and just called it TU. So if you look and you see right there where the cornice is, and then you've got the rock patch one, two, three, four, and five, and then the gully one, Above those rock patches is where the traverse entrance is to the gullies from Marks. That'll give you an idea of the terrain that I stopped that girl sliding on. This is a 180 degree aspect from the video. So, for that guy out there that tried to tell me I was on Liberty Bowl, trust me bro, I know the mountain a lot better than you. As a matter of fact, one of my good friends died up there. And I'm going to talk about that a little bit later when I get to a better spot. All right. But I figured I'd go ahead and stop here and show you that. It really is beautiful views up here. It's too bad that the normal Joe Schmo or even the normal person can't come and enjoy it the way it used to be. <sighs> and that's a shame. But I'm going to go ahead and finish going up the mountain. I'll show you what you're looking at when you come up to the ski resort. And I'll show you the parking and stuff that they have. Which I hear their parking is getting out of control. If you're not here by 10 o'clock in the morning, you're not getting a parking spot. That's a big bummer. I don't think any place should ever develop like that. I mean, you have people complaining left and right about Vail. And they want to turn this place into another Vail. So anyway, I'm going to finish trekking up the mountain. I'll see you guys in a second. Drive off, there's one more quick thing I want to show you. You see that ski, ski run right there? If you look and you see the patches of snow that are exposed that aren't in the trees, a portion of that's called Bear's Lair. And trust me, they call it Bear's Lair for a reason. All right, I'm going to get up the mountain. Well, my Jeep must be really upset at me. I lost one of the pins to my sway bar linkage in the front. So it was clicking on me, so I had to make sure that I didn't have anything seriously going wrong because I'm probably a, safe to say a little over a hundred miles from home. But I'll show you what came loose real quick. Now this is the thing about having a Jeep, especially an old one. It's got a four inch lift on it, so this is something that you end up getting. And by the way, when you do off-roading, you can choose to go ahead and remove these for the sake of articulation on the front. And it's right there. As you can see, my sway bar linkage, I had to go ahead and pull the connecting rods. So now the front can go ahead and teeter-totter. I'll have to safety that up before I hit the highway home. But in the meantime, I figured I'd show you the entrance. I'm in the front 15 minute drop off of the parking lot over here at Big Sky. Now the ski resort is closed and I don't feel like getting into trouble. So I'm not going to show you any of the stuff up there. There are probably other videos and stuff that show this place in depth for all the things that they have. But it's mostly just your basic ski resort, just like all the rest of them. This one happens to be a lot more glim and glam nowadays than it used to be. It used to be a really cool place, but not so much anymore, at least for your local that just wants to go skiing without them trying to take an armor and a leg, you know? I heard it was like $300 plus for a day ticket to get, the to get on the tram. I remember it was less than $100 for full access. But I'm going to show that to you again. You can see the big coulard, really, really nice. It goes from up there all the way down and then L's out. And then next to that are all the gully chutes. And then the first main run that you see going this way happens to be Mark's. Now, my hospital to 11,166 feet. If you look closely, you'll see the rocks going up. They come over and then back down on that run. I started above that in upper marks. 
and then drop down. And when I said mountain goat, I was passing that upper rock section into Marks itself. Now it's only accessed through a ski run called Otter Slide, okay? But I figure I'd go ahead and give you another perspective so that you can see the different aspect of the mountain. Now this little mountain right here on the other half of it, that's called Challenger and they call it Challenger for a reason. So I'm gonna go ahead and get out of here and get a little bit of a better view. I'm gonna go up on a road and kind of show you I'm going to see if I can show you an overlook of this whole area, provided they haven't built houses all the way up the road, all right? So I'll be back. Well, this was what was called free steer. Now that's just one section of it. There's more of it coming up and then there's the condos that I lived in when I first got up here, which is called the Hill Condos. I'm gonna show you that here in a second, but I'm gonna give you the few in front of me so you can get an idea. There's one parking lot there and more parking lots here. Now, these were the Big Sky Apartments right here. This was one of the cheapest. The ones down there, not these ones. The ones down there were the Big Sky Apartments. Now, to the best of my knowledge, those were the cheapest places that you were able to rent and still be able to work up here. But like most other places, they've got a waiting list. And I mean a waiting list. You gotta put your name on it. And then once you get one, it's kind of one of those places you never wanna move out of because if you do, you might never ever get it back. The place here on the right that I'm getting ready to pass I'll queue it up here in a second. I'm going to pull into the parking lot of the condos that I used to live in. But this building on the right of me right here used to be called the Black Bear Bar and Grill. The owners sold it, and after they sold it, they turned it into Big Sky's employee housing. Which is kind of like, okay, I get that. You got to have a place to house your employees but here's the funny thing the housing that they have here that they offer isn't even the housing required for them to be able to run the resort honestly you got a lot more people up here to run this town than what's actually capable for people to stay up here now they built three different buildings up here and honestly me looking at the place i'm like wow because I remember when the building that I'm looking at right now, which I'm going to show you here in one second. I remember it wasn't even there. And it was called the Mountain Lodge. So that building is new. This is another employee housing that that actually used to be the Black Bear. And that one back there is the original employee housing. But these condos right here used to actually be cedar siding and then they went out and got a company called Linrich, which was the same company that did the siding on the condo that I used to own down in the meadow with my daughter's mom. But they went ahead and wrapped these because it needed to get done. But the one that I stayed in is all the way down over there and all the way down on the corner. The number was 1187. And I rented it from the guy that was killed on the backside of this mountain due to a cornice breaking and him getting caught in an avalanche. Crappy part is, it took months for them to locate him. And as a matter of fact, it wasn't even search and rescue that found him. It was his father, his brother, and one of his very good friends. And actually, the very good friend happens to be the guy that's in my quick tree run video wearing the white helmet, whitish gray helmet with the big old Yeti beard. So he lives in here somewhere too. I know exactly where, but I'm not gonna point it out. Actually, I recognize a couple of vehicles in here, which means that there are some people that I know that still live up here, but I'm not gonna go bug them. But I figured I'd show you that because I actually lived up here before I lived down in the meadow and I even lived in another place in the canyon. Now when I lived here, I was able to rent one of these for $500 a month with all the utilities included and it was a studio. Partial studio. If you don't know what that means, it's basically you have a bedroom but there's no complete wall. It's a three-sided wall that goes into the living room and then on the other side of that you got your kitchen. 
But in the meantime, I'm going to go up one more spot and I'll sum up this video and then I'm going to go ahead and get out of here, alright? So I hope you liked the footage. If you did, leave a like on it. Hit that subscribe button if you want. I'd greatly appreciate it. It definitely helps me and makes things a lot more easier to reaching my goal. Because after all, people are always talking about my teeth. This is one of the ways how I'm trying to get new teeth because just like inflation, they are not cheap. And I don't have any insurance that's going to help me at the point that I'm at right now. I would really like to get implants, not dentures. So anyway, other than that, share the video with a friend if you would, please. And make sure you hit that notification bell, all right? I'll see you guys at the next stop. Outside the window, take a look at how this place looks. You've got your resort back there. And then a bunch of different condos and stuff like that all throughout the woods in this mountain right over there where that power station is that happens to be the maintenance shacks now here's the messed up part about a place like this honestly most of these are vacation houses and i mean like vacation houses guy's got a lot of money he decides to buy a house it sits empty for most of the year and they're here for about a week and that's about it granted it does help the you know the town function and stuff like that because they have bills they gotta pay they have cleaning services and stuff that clean their houses that nobody's been in every once in a while they'll have a friend show up and kind of stay in their house and stuff like that but in all honesty when you're looking at it as a whole that's the most devastating thing you can do to an area is buy a property that someone needed to live in and rent so that they can work up here and have a chance at surviving and pay their bills. And then you buy it, you kick them out, you turn it into a vacation rental. When I was up here, probably about 90% of all these houses were vacation houses up here on the mountain. Down in the meadow, totally different story. I'd say about five to 10% were vacation houses. But it just seemed to be a trend. And honestly, everybody's always complaining about how things are so expensive and how inflation's all messed up. That's how it starts. That's exactly how it starts. So if you keep going straight instead of turning right like I'm going to, you're going to hit the other half of the mountain ski resort called Moonlight Basin. Now Moonlight Basin used to be its own private entity. I think it is still privately owned, but it's ran by Boyne Corporation. So everybody that works for Big Sky works at Moonlight to operate the place. I don't think the original owners sold it. I just really think that they sold the, con the concessionaire portion of it for reasons unknown. I've got a couple of ideas, some hearsay, but other than that, I'm not really going to look that much farther into it. But as you can see, this house that I'm going to pass right here, nobody lives in it. The house next door to it right here, nobody lives in it. Pretty much almost every single house that you see in this clip of the video is a house that is a vacation home only. Now, I get it if you want to get a vacation home. I'd love to have a vacation home. But in all honesty, I would buy a vacation home, find a local that's not going to trash my place, and then let them rent it out for a reasonable amount. That way they have the ability to live close to work and possibly make some money. But that just doesn't happen up here, unfortunately. It's like, everybody's like, oh, this is mine and I don't have to share. Okay, that's fine. But when you're gonna be shopping at thrift stores to replenish the stuff from your vacation rentals because you went ahead and you've got some vacation rentals that you rented out don't complain that you can't find anybody decent or if you're an employer don't complain that you can't find quality employees 
because you basically eliminated their possibility of not only being able to sustain a living in an environment like this. Anyway, my battery's dying on the GoPro, so I guess that's the end of the video. You guys take care and...